Welcome to the Awakened Goddess Show, your source for inspiration, wisdom, and personal discovery. The place to learn from a diverse mix of mentors, metaphysical experts, spiritual leaders, and best-selling authors from around the world. I'm Angela Wilkinson, attraction coach and founder of The Goddess Next Door. Join me as I explore the minds of my masterful guests while they share powerful insights and easy-to-use tools you can start using right away. Now, let's tap into the energy of the Awakened Goddess and be enlightened by today's guest. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Angela Wilkinson, and welcome to this episode of the Awakened Goddess Show. Loretta Brown lives on the edge of the physical and spiritual world, utilizing her unique gifts to offer a vast knowledge of the great divine mysteries. Included are things such as mysteries of the feminine flame, chanting, spirit guide communication, angels, psychic development, and how to use the forces of the natural world. She believes everyone is meant to awaken, shine, and share their own beautiful gifts with the world. Many people have called Loretta a teacher, a healer, a modern-day high priestess, a gift to the world, and simply the girl next door. Loretta teaches that everyone was born exactly the way they are for a higher purpose. When we recognize and utilize our unique gifts, sharing them with the world, we become radiant and joyful. This is the deep purpose of all life. Singing, chanting, and sound are a vital part of this joyous dance on planet Earth and open doorways within ourselves as well as within our world. But before I talk with Loretta today, I'm super excited to share that Spark Society is now officially open. Spark Society is the place to be to ignite your own brilliance and let it shine. Join today and you'll get immediate access to a collection of exclusive gifts from Awakened Goddess Show guests, plus a private community to connect with other Awakened Goddesses to share insights and ideas. Visit bit.ly, that's B-I-T dot L-Y, forward slash spark society for more information and to join today. See you in the society. Well, welcome Loretta to the Awakened Goddess Show. I am absolutely thrilled to have you join me today because you are here celebrating my week-long birthday celebration. <laughs> <laughs> and you are one of my favorite goddesses in the world and you are representing Washington State. And <laughs> <laughs> and the cosmic universe and the cosmic universe yes oh my gosh the stories you can tell yeah oh, no. we're, we're gonna get into that today because you have the most amazing stories but um first off you know one of the reasons why i have you here is you know this week is really every day i'm dedicating the show to someone that's really impacted me in my life in some really awesome way and you have done that um i was trying to think back how many years we've known each other now and do you know how long it's been <laughs> yeah, you know that's a good question um i think was it 2006 2007 I, I think it's 2006 yeah so nine years wow well not that old i don't know no just, a, just, mo a, just a moment in time a moment in time yeah yeah, yeah. And, and it was interesting because initially, you know, uh, we were hanging out in the same circle, going to like the same workshops together and, mm -hmm. and, um, we were just kind of like doing our own thing. And then at one point our lives totally converged. And ever since, I think the last, what, four years we have, I, it's at least four years. It might be five. Let me think a minute. It's five years. Wow. I think. Five years. You no, know, I have to kind of go back in my head a little bit on that, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember there was the, um, we went to, um, was it, yeah, Las Vegas. We were in Las Vegas together and uh, staying at Christie's mother's house. And we were all there. It was like our circle of goddesses. And, <laughs> <laughs> and one of the things you did, like when we were all leaving, I think the turning point for me was we all embraced and you started chanting uh -huh. and there was just something about it that was like, Oh my gosh, it was like, 
Yeah, you were just speaking to our souls. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's one of the things I would love to talk with you today about because chanting since then has become something that I've been really fascinated by. And I know you've been part of a chanting group for what, like 15 years or? Yeah, about 18. 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I always say um, sound saved my life. Mm. And how so? That's such a great question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to waste it's any time. Know, it's hard to know where to start because yeah. um, I was born musical. I think everybody's musical. But uh, as far back as I can remember, music has been a vital part of my life. And sound, I'm very sensitive to sound. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I mean, I can remember as a baby lying on the floor and my dad had played the piano and I wanted to play the piano. People say you can't remember that far back, but it's clear as a bell in my head. Wow. And I would I would figure out how to somehow wiggle over to the edge of that piano. And that's how I learned to walk. I, I, I pulled myself up the leg of the piano to touch the keys. So uh, and then I'd fall and I have those dings on your forehead. You know, those <laughs> those, are, those are piano bench dings. Oh, in case you want to put that scar is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not a Harry Potter scar. It's a piano bench scar. <laughs> but, wow. um, you know, sound is just so vital to us. Um, it's the I consider it the building block of everything. Mm hmm. And uh, in my studies of sound, which we should probably talk about, I began to see just exactly what that means. And, of course, in my own experience. But sound, because it's such a building block, creates this skeleton on which everything else is created. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, not to get preachy on you, but, you know, there's a, a verse in the Bible, and I could actually use something from the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita also, uh, where it, it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And so from our own, uh, from that, we can begin to take a look at, well, what does it mean when I emit a sound from my voice mm. and how powerful is my voice? Just mm -hmm. how powerful is it? Well, I'm here to tell you it's very powerful. Yeah, very, very powerful. And in fact, it is connected quite often in my energy work. We talk about the connection between the chakras and the throat chakra. The fifth chakra is connected to the second chakra, which is your creative sexual chakra. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Say what? <laughs> <laughs> ladies of, of fire signs <laughs> yeah girl on fire <laughs> <laughs> the aries <laughs> and it's our month yes it is. finally yes. i know <laughs> <laughs> i'm waiting for it but um back in the day when i started uh chanting you know i'm very spiritual by nature i've always been on a spiritual path and and um my my story of how I got into chanting is is a little bit interesting because I had come back from nine years living in Saudi Arabia teaching music and was going through an awful lot of transition in my life, learned to meditate and reconnected with my spirit guides and, and all this sort of thing. And I had I had always had this idea in my head that I wanted to do something with music and healing. Mm -hmm. And I checked into music therapy and I was like, nope, this isn't it. I don't know what it is I want to do, but this isn't it. And I kept searching. And finally, I came across this ad in a magazine for a woman that lived here on Bainbridge Island named Pat Moffat Cook. And she is a, a leading edge expert on, on sound and music. And uh, I went to see her. And it was one of those profound experiences where you walk into the room and the minute I laid eyes on her, I burst into tears mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't even figure out what that was all about. And she understood better than I did what was happening, which is just sort of an, a, a release. You know, when you step into a sacred space or an energy that is 
um, resonating with you, you open. Mm -hmm. And my heart opened, and I think it was five years before I could actually be in her presence without bursting into tears. It was our joke. And um, so I signed up for her sacred uh, chanting class, and, and what was interesting is I told her about the ad a couple of years later, and she looked at me real oddly, and she said, Loretta, I never ran an ad in a magazine. (laughs) (laughs) I said, what? And she said, I never ran an ad. How'd you get my name and number? And I said, I got to thinking about it, and I went, actually, I, it was on a piece of paper next to my bed, and I thought I had written it, so I must have dreamt it, Mm. you see. Mm -hmm. So we have these profound spiritual things that quite often Uh, lead us forward into life. But, you know, from that time, um, I signed up and went through the uh, training course with her. But I also went through something called a auditory stimulation program. Hmm. And it's something that your listeners might be interested in, especially if they have any uh, learning disabilities or if they have children with learning disabilities or uh, processing disabilities and it's, it was um, the uh, course that I went through was from Dr. Alfred Tomatis. It's called the Tomatis Method of Auditory Stimulation. Now, at that time, Dr. Tomatis was still alive. He has now passed on. And uh, what I discovered in that uh, stimulation course was that hearing is the basis of everything. And there's a difference between hearing and listening. Mm -hmm. And when I hear something, let's put it this way. I can only reproduce the sounds that I actually hear. And so if I am not hearing certain frequencies for whatever reason, I cannot reproduce them vocally. And I also cannot reproduce that tonality within my life. So let me give you an example. Let's say that as a child I was abused or I had trauma, you know, which could be emotional or psychological or physical, Mm -hmm. sexual, Mm -hmm. right? If that happened at a certain period of my development, I will actually have shut down certain tones within my spectrum of sound. Hmm. Now, I don't want to get too scientific on you because, you know, we could go crazy with this. Right. But the point being that that let's say that, and this is really how it shows up, if I had that happen as a child, I might actually have problems with my knees because your, your body vibrates, your feet vibrate at a lower tone than your head. And so the spectrum of vibration of your body is different from foot to head. And so the tonality of the knees equals about five, six years old. Isn't that interesting? That is. Yeah. I had no idea. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're going to be going, whoa, where am I vibrating and where am I not, right? Yeah. (laughs) Check it out. Check it out, girls. Check it out. (laughs) But, (laughs) But anyway, so in the auditory stimulation program, they give you a regular air conduction hearing test. And then they give you a bone conduction hearing test because you actually hear with your bones. Mm. That's vibratory. And they compare those charts and then they figure out what areas of your body are not resonating. And then the stimulation program um, stimulates those areas. Hmm. Now, I'm here to tell you that when you begin to stimulate the areas that have not been resonating, (laughs) guess what happens? (laughs) You don't suddenly jump up and go, yippee, like what I'm doing right now. Yeah. You, everything that's laying there comes up. Huh. And so your trauma in its own way may come up. For my own self, I had flashbacks. Mm-hmm. And flashbacks actually were happening, and I didn't realize really what they were until I went through this program. A flashback is where you have the memory of something associated with strong emotion to the point where it can black out what's happening around you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people can relate to this. Yeah. And so when that happens, you need to be with a facilitator who knows how to help you process that. And you know, it's easy. You just let it go. 
Mm-hmm. As you let it go, the body begins to resonate, and it's like that energy then begins to flow through that area of the body. And in my case, I got my knees back, so uh, mm-hmm. no more uh, being cut off at the knees. <laughs> huh. and, and imagine how grounded that would make me then, and how now I could finish tasks, and I could listen, and I could hear tonality I'd, I hadn't heard before. That same idea you know, which is really the, the science of psychoacoustics, is in ancient mantras, mm. in ancient chanting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So definitely I can see how mantras and chanting can be extremely powerful. Well, and the mantras that, that I did are Sanskrit. It's ancient language. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've even had people from East India tell me, they go, Loretta, we don't, we don't do those. We don't... We don't do what you do. <laughs> we don't even do it. You know, the priests, are they do it. You know, the mm-hmm. Brahmins, they do mm-hmm. it. And so I've been very, very fortunate that I got into it. Obviously, it's something that I was directed to do. I felt led to do, and, and I absolutely love. But yeah. when you do a mantra, the syllables are, are very, um, they are words, but we can also chant and do mantra with just sounds, basic bija sounds, this, the basic sound, uh, uh, the seeds of sound. Mm-hmm. And what happens is that your tongue will flick against the top of the palate with certain words mm-hmm. or against the teeth. You know, if we, if we want to talk about what happens in the mouth when you're talking or singing. And through that repetition, you begin to activate centers of the brain as well as the most important area of the body and no it's not what you think it is my dear (laughs) it's the inner vestibular system Mm -hmm. of the inner ear where the liquid is you know Mm. that place where we keep our balance right right Mm -hmm. the inner ear regulates every muscle in the body i have to say that again the inner ear regulates every muscle in the body Mm -hmm. which brings me right back to my first point which is hearing and listening and so what do we hear and what do we listen to and how many times when people are talking are we really thinking about what the next thing is we're gonna say (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah that's all too common Mm -hmm. Uh uh-huh rather than really listening Mm -hmm. so um when i say that music saved my life i mean in absolutely every way you can imagine because it brought the dead parts of me alive Mm -hmm. and as you know on your own journey you know i've watched you on your own journey you're an amazing amazing woman thank you But when we have the courage, when we have the courage to face the truth about what we've been living through and the the truth of our lives, and we step forward into healing ourselves, well, it's a, it is not an easy journey. Mm -mm. I wish I could tell you it's easy, (laughs) but one thing I can guarantee you is that this life coming alive accepting life and accepting putting your feet on this planet and drinking this beautiful planet in and it's juicy and wonderful and I love it here and I just it's colorful and tasty Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's worth it yeah like all those sensual elements that I think we take for granted yeah a lot of times yeah Yeah, and you know, the other thing that's really fun about chanting is that you don't have to be a great singer. (laughs) (laughs) Are you a singer, Angela? Do you like to sing? I used to. I used to sing, but not anymore. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and singing is very personal. Mm -hmm. Um, Our voice is personal. Actually, you know, take everybody, that back. I was yeah. singing earlier today. I think I must have been tapping into your energy before Woo. this interview because I was singing hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> the sun was out. So I was just like, I was so if euphoric. <laughs> well, I was, I was remembering um, the other day, you know, because I love children and I was 
uh, people sometimes bring their kids in and they talk to me and I know they can see my energy field. I just love kids. They're just so in tune. Um, but they quite often will do this sing songy thing like, Oh, I've got my fork. Oh, I've got my fork. Oh, I've got my fork. Here's my fork. Yeah. Here's my fork. And they'll <laughs> run around, you know, doing whatever it is, right? Mm -hmm. And it's lovely when they do that because they're developing their brains. They're developing their hearing and their listening. The other thing that's really easy and everybody can do it is humming. Mm -hmm. Humming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Humming. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and how many times do we hum? I used to hum all the time as a little girl and people would say, stop humming. And I would hum at school. And if I hum, I can actually concentrate better. Mm -hmm. And they would say, you're being too loud. You have to stop humming, which, okay, I understand. But on the other hand, if all you do is one to three minutes of humming every day, you will start to change your life. Now, it sounds hmm. too easy, yeah. but it is a specific type of humming. And it, you have to purse your lips like you're going to blow a candle out or ready for that sacred kiss, you know. Mm -hmm. And when you hum, you want it right up resonating your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you notice that I'm not worried about my tone. Right. The tone or the pitch is whatever you're comfortable with. Now, I have a very low voice. You know, actually, I shave. I think I'm a part man. But oh, <laughs> I could talk really high like this. But <laughs> I'm just doing that because I want the listeners to play with their voices when they're not listening to this. You know, like, really listen to your voice. Do you like your voice? Um you know, have you always thought, oh, gosh, well, I, you know, have you ever ran into across people that, that are like, oh, I talk like this, and oh, I'm doing this, you know. <laughs> I, on, on the internet the other day, I was just browsing who knows what, and I came across this, like, reality show, and there was a woman on there that literally talks so high. She was, like, talking like this, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I thought, <laughs> I thought she must be, like, faking it, but it kept going. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother show to talk about. Um, you know, a lot of people come to me and they're, they'll be telling me, I don't know what's wrong at work. They won't promote me. And she's talking like a little girl. Mm. I don't know what's wrong at work. They won't promote me. And I go, you need to practice the tone of your voice. Mm -hmm. And more than that, the tone of our voice may be reflecting our own strength or our own inadequacies within us, you see? Wow. And we can hear it in the tone of people's voice. So when we settle down inside ourselves, when we become more grounded, or when we relieve any blockages in our energy system, then our full voice will begin to come out. And, um, and that full voice, it, it, that's really who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the authentic voice. So yeah. um, I do workshops here. You know, sometimes we do uh, great workshops around the voice. And, and um, we always cry. We get people crying because we like that. You know, because it means, <laughs> oh, we got to their hearts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I touched it. <laughs> but... Um, we do sometimes talk about the voice, the tone of the voice, and the name you were given at birth. Hmm. And how well do you resonate with that name? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. And a lot of people change their names, and, you know, this, that's a whole other discussion. But you might begin to ask yourself, how well do I resonate with that name? And not only that, but when you say your name out loud, how do you say it? Mm -hmm. You know, my name's Loretta. Mm -hmm. But another Loretta might emphasize a difference. She might say, my name's Loretta or Loretta, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm Loretta. See? Yeah. So my own way of saying it is peculiar to me. And so there's a lot, there's a lot in that. Yeah, I never even, you know, considered all of, <laughs> like you said. Just... <laughs> Too much stuff, I know. Too much stuff. Well, yeah, I mean, I was just thinking, oh, wow, yeah, so the resonance and tone of your voice and, and sound, and I could see how that affects different things, but now it's like, as you're talking more and more, it's like, wow, you're right how it's just, it infuses everything, and since everything is energy, 
And when we talk about the quantum field and how we shift that and oh my God, yeah, you can just see how what you're projecting out through your, your truth or your tone or however you're speaking can really affect your life. Well, and, and yeah, speaking our truth is a big issue. Yeah, I just sl slid that one in there. <laughs> you know, it's a big issue. What is my truth? And do I really believe my own truth? Mm -hmm. Or do I even know what my truth is? And can I speak my truth? And can I speak it lovingly but firmly? You know, do I have to be aggressive with it? Um, in the study of cymatics, cymatics, C-Y-M-A-T-I-C-S, we study the effect of sound upon matter. And people might want to Google this because it's fantastic work. And it shows how when we take sound, and there's, little, there's a, a, a metal plate with little filings on it, little metal filings. You, you expose that to sound, and the metal filings will get up and dance around, and they'll go into perfect geometric shapes, oh, you know, like cool. what a spirograph used to do, right? Oh, yeah. But these perfect uh, geometric shapes, I call it sacred geometry, they only hold their form as long as the sound is being admit, emitted. The minute the sound stops, the filings go back down flat. Mm -hmm. Give them a different tone and they come up different. Now, the first time I saw that, my eyes flew open and my mouth dropped open and I, a light bulb went off in my head and I went, oh my gosh, that is that is what's happening when each one of us is is playing our own symphony, which is living our truth, mm. being our authentic self. Yeah. When I emit that frequency through my body, I'm actually manifesting myself here. Like I can't say mm -hmm. that any other way. As long as I'm alive and breathing, I'm emitting a, a, a tonality, a vibration that's affecting my health. Mm -hmm. And that's on all levels. And so if I can adjust that, and see, that's where mantra comes in. Mm -hmm. If I can change the form of that, if I somehow am not playing all of my notes, like what I said earlier, if I somehow am detuned, if I somehow am not believing in myself, if, if my emotions are broken down, if I, you, you, see, you get mm -hmm. the idea. Mm -hmm. My thoughts are not clear. I'm programmed from childhood to think I'm not all that, a bag of chips, right? Mm -hmm. If these things are interfering with my pure signal, then I have a couple of options. There's many, many doorways into this, and this is where a lot of healing work comes in, is to help us release that old stuffed stored energy, be it emotional, mental, psychological, or even to open the gateways into our pure spiritual self. And by the repeating of mantras, now mantras themselves by their very nature are sacred geometry. And when I repeat a mantra over and over, I make a strong, strong vibrational signal through sound that begins to activate within me that resonance. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to use a chant for Durga as an example, because I love Durga. Yes. <laughs> for those of you who don't know Durga, you should go check her out. She, we totally need her on the planet right now. She is the warrior goddess protector. She comes in many forms. One of my favorite forms is riding on the back of a tiger, and she's got her <laughs> ten arms flying around and, and doing all kinds of things, and, and her face is completely serene. She's exquisitely beautiful. And why is she so serene? Because she is sitting in the seat of her power. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The tiger represents the feminine divine power, the Shakti. We love the Shakti. Yeah. Because we're so fiery. And we love it. We even say Shakti, we start to go on fire. We're like, yes. <sighs> My daughter used to call me the fire breathing goat. It's just looking like a fire breathing goat. <laughs> That's funny. But um, let's say that I'm going to start chanting to Durga. I don't really know much about her. So first thing I'm going to do is find out a little bit about her and maybe get a picture of her off the Internet that I resonate with, even though she's she's from a, a, a different place than where I grew up from. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to realize that when I first begin, I'm going to have trouble saying the words. I'm not even going to really know what's happening. And 
when I say that you will invoke the goddess, don't get don't get thrown off by that. It's a, it's a way of saying that we're going to begin to activate the principles of her. We're going to activate that energy, that geometric form that awakens her within me hmm. or awakens her within you. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it, like I said, I'm trying to keep this simple. But the truth is that people have chanted the Durga chant for thousands of years and that everything is energy. And when you do something over and over and over again, it begins to build. Mm -hmm. And so when you start to chant, there comes a point where you begin to tap into that energy of all the people who have ever chanted before. I call it a river of consciousness. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And so you truly will invoke her as well as evoke her. Mm hmm and the protection will come, the power will come, and you get to be faced with your ego and what has gotten in the way <laughs> of you sitting in the seat of your own power, mm. peaceful, serene, and calm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and so, as we know, when, when that stuff comes up, oh, God. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's like, oh, wow, really? <laughs> Well, what we love is that she comes. We don't have to try to define that, mm -hmm. um, but she will come. You will feel it. You will know it. You will sense it. You will. Your life will begin to shake out. The more you do it, um, the more it changes your life. And once you've changed that vibratory pattern, then you say, "Well, gee, what's the next thing?" <laughs> <laughs> Let's try Goddess Kali. <laughs> Traditionally. You chant 108 times a day for 40 days, 40, 41 days. Some of these chants are different. Mm -hmm. And you can get a counter called a mala. That's yes. just 108 beads on a, on, a, on a rope. You can have beans. I don't care. You can have beads. You can just have 108 of them, move them from one side to the other. You can count on your fingers. It's a little hard. I yeah. only have 10 fingers. <laughs> yeah, I do have toes. Kind of works. <laughs> Yeah. And so you could do that. And and so what is the significance of 108? It has to do with what's called the nadis in the body, the mm -hmm. uh, energy um, points. Oh, I, I, okay. If I said uh, nadis are, um, I think the e easiest thing would be if you think of acupressure points, although that's not exactly right. Mm, okay. Okay. So you're activating all all of the energy center, all of the circuits. Mm. Yeah. You cool. you might think of your body as a, um, you know, we all have heard of acupuncture and these ancient maps of the body that that follow the energy meridians or the the uh, yeah. And we have chi that flows through the body. English is is a bulky language when we talk about these things because we have to call it life force energy. And we're not sure what life force energy is. In fact, we're not sure maybe that's anti-Christian, but it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, life force moves through us or it does not. The energies either move through certain areas of us or they do not. And when it's flowing, we feel light. We feel vibrant. We have smiles on our faces. Um, we rejuvenate ourselves, we become ageless, we live long, healthy lives. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of kind of the basis of chi or ki. Mm -hmm. so, so when you decide you want to start chanting, uh, mm -hmm. do, do you just kind of intuit or see just who you are drawn to start chanting upon? <laughs> If you're going to start chanting, it's good to be with somebody who knows what they're doing, by the way. Chanting is passed on from uh, master to student, you know, by those who have embodied it, mm -hmm. on to those who don't. Now, a lot of people go on to Google and they, and they um, you know, you can get information off of there. But, but in tradition, now I do what's called Vedic chanting. Uh, Vedic chanting is three tones. And, you know, it's very, uh, it, we're not singing. We're not like Diva Primal. We're not singing a song. Mm -hmm. You can also do chanting that way. But I do it in the ancient way. In the ancient way, you're, you are taught by a master, a guru, a yogi, who, who um, 
tells you how to pronounce it correctly, where the inflections are and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, usually what happens is <laughs> somebody, they know what you need. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, they do kind of know what you need. Or you're given an option and you chant them and you yourself will know which one you need to do mm -hmm. because you'll mm -hmm. resonate with it. You'll be like, wow, that's the one. I can yeah. feel it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember when I went to see Ama, the hugging saint, uh, that you have the option of, of uh, requesting a specific one. or, um, And what I understand is if it's not the right one for you, she'll give you something different. <laughs> yeah, she knows. Yeah. She knows what you need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she'll need. But for those people that just beginning, remember that you can begin with humming, mm -hmm. frontal face humming. Mm -hmm. And you can begin by just doing the vowel tones. A, E, I, O, U, U, U. A, E, I, O, U. And you would do them like this. A, E, A, O, U. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you can do that. And um, begin to pay attention as you're doing it where it's resonating your body. Because, see, people think you got to do a lot, but I'm telling you right now to begin with three minutes of chanting, three minutes of humming, three minutes of oming will exhaust you. It is a lot. Why? Because it is vibrating your instrument. You are the instrument. Your voice is the resonator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it will activate all kinds of things. So, um, you know, wax will come out of your ears and your nose will <laughs> run and you'll break out in a rash. <laughs> you'll get moody. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. really making you want to do it. Right? I know, I know. <laughs> the other thing, though, is that you'll get blissful. Mm -hmm. You'll get quiet and you'll find a way to find a center no matter what. You know, when I'm really anxious. I sometimes just hum. Just hum. Hum until I can calm myself down. Because humming, like I said, resonates the midbrain. And in the midbrain, we have all our natural opiates. You know, dopamine and serotonin and oxytocin and all that great stuff that comes straight from our own brain. Mm -hmm. All natural. Yeah. And lifts us up. Yeah, and I bet, you know, depending on the tone that you're using, you can either, like, ground your energy or you can increase your vibration you can elevate i think the idea ultimately is to elevate your vibration mm -hmm. you know the idea is to shake out of you that which is not who you really are and when we begin to resonate these high vibrational mantras they they do um they do just simply shake out of you the dark energy everything is energy Everything is vibration. Everything. Yeah. And so my, if I'm feeling um, negative or if I'm feeling anxious or depressed or angry or frustrated, these are low quality vibrations. And I could, I could sing a dirge and get myself even further down. <laughs> or I can even sing a happy song. Mm-hmm. My mother, in her great wisdom, used to tell me, Loretta, if you're scared at night, just sing a song. If you wake up and you're afraid, sing a song. So I would. Mm -hmm. I'd be petrified. And I'd be singing, <laughs> three blind mice. <laughs> three blind mice. <laughs> or row, row, row your boat. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I remember that I would start with a real scared little voice, and then pretty soon I'd be, si yeah, I'd be singing it really loud. And, of course, that would be about the time Mom would come in and going, Sweetheart, you got to be quiet. You're really loud. <laughs> <laughs> twinkle, singing Twinkle, little star with a vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, yeah. It's my battle song or something. but <laughs> You're owning it. I was owning Twinkle. <laughs> oh but um, these things do raise us. Mm -hmm. Singing raises our vibrational rate. Humming, chanting, oming. Um, you know, a, a chant that a lot of people know is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. This is a Buddhist chant. Mm 
Namyo horenge kyo, namyo horenge kyo, namyo. It's very, you know, a lot of people know it. And um, it's a great healing chant. It is from, like I said, it's Buddhist tradition, so there's different types of chanting. But um, that's a great one to do if you don't know anything else. Mm-hmm. It's easy to find. Yeah. Easy to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, and and like kind of like what we were talking about earlier, it seems like you really want to know and set a pure intention with when you're chanting or when you're you're singing or whatever it is that you're the sound you're producing because some of the, it's all very powerful. Well, it is very powerful because what what comes out of your mouth manifests mm-hmm. yeah. and i truly mean it yeah. uh, you know they've done studies on saliva and yeah uh-huh saliva when you're angry and you're spewing out venomous words guess what yeah your saliva is venomous mm-hmm. and when you sweeten it and you begin to speak beautiful words, your saliva changes in nature. It's very interesting. This also happens in the chemistry of your body, and of course in the laws of attraction. What you focus on, you will receive. That's really all there is to it. So what you send out will come back to you. Yeah. And uh, declarations, you know, declarations are, are part of speech too, You know, what is a declaration? I declare blah, blah, or I am blah, blah. Anything Mm -hmm. after the words I am is a declaration. So be careful what you say. And, of course, the more you say it, the stronger it becomes, once again, the law of repetition. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. We could talk a lot about that, but um, perhaps we've said enough. (laughs) (laughs) I was just sitting here thinking about, oh my gosh, you know, you were mentioning, we brought up talking about, you know, speaking your truth. And I know for me that that has been a, a a big challenge, a a huge part of my journey. And, and, you know, I, I think that most people go through that. And I think that a lot of times we don't even know what our, our own truth is. And maybe we think we're speaking our truth until something comes up where we're challenged and then we can feel it in our body where, Ooh, maybe I'm not speaking my truth. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, well, the throat is so, the throat's so prob- problematic and, um, the throat speaks for all of the lower chakras. Really? I didn't uh-huh. know that. So think about it for a moment. In our root chakra, you know, we have a lot of fear down in there. Are we rooted? Are we grounded? Our second chakra, our sexual, sacral, creative chakra, you know, how, how, you know, boy, there's a lot of mess in there. Mm -hmm. You know, we could talk about the third chakra is my will center. I will, you will, you know, my digestion. And then there's my heart. God bless the heart. Our beautiful, big, beautiful hearts have all been broken. I don't know why the journey of love includes the breaking open of the heart. I've never understood that part. And yet there it is, and it becomes tender, and it it gets betrayed, and it has an awful time. And then there's the throat. And the throat is in a narrow part of our body, and yet the throat's job is to speak the truth of all the lower chakras. Now, if I will not speak my truth for my first, second, third, fourth, or fifth chakras... I'm in trouble. Now, the sixth chakra, of course, is the third eye. This is the part of intuition and knowledge. Mm -hmm. But I also get a little spacey when I'm up there. And especially if I go in the seventh chakra or or the chakra is above, I'm up in the celestial realms. You ever meditated and blissed out? You come back and people say, well, how was it? And you can't even talk. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Because you're out. (laughs) Yeah. you got to come down and connect with the voice. And so the throat chakra has a big job and it gets all clogged up and it's afraid and, and you know, if the voice of fear is talking or if the voice of confusion is talking, it is very difficult to speak our truths. We must connect with our higher selves in order to speak our truths. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 
a lot of the stuff that comes out of our mouth is really not from a higher place. Right. It's from the lower realms. And that's why we have to bring, like I said, we have to bring heaven to earth, bring it down in, and we have to purify and heal all that lower stuff. And then we have to be really honest with ourselves. What, what am I speaking right now? Is this my truth? Or is this is just the voice of my broken heart? Yeah. Is this just the voice of my, you got to do it my way or I'm going to pound your face in? You know, what, <laughs> what's talking? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that, that just reinforces that whole idea that it's really important who you surround yourself with. You know, yes. having the support of people around you who you can speak your truth with and not people that only want to hear what they want to hear and yeah. don't value or honor or respect your truth. And isn't that hard to find and isn't it sacred when you find it? Mm -hmm. You know, when you really have friends and a group of people and you've got to find your tribe, those people that understand that sometimes you need a shoulder to cry on or you need someone to talk to that isn't in judgment of you. Right. Or that also understands that you own your stuff, but sometimes you have to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> and also friends that will own their stuff. <laughs> or yeah. if you say to them, you know what, I think that's your stuff. I love you anyway, but, you know, you left that sitting in the middle of the floor. Maybe, you know, you could pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, gosh, going back to where we first started this conversation. Yeah, the... Our, our our sacred sister, our soul sister group. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy, yeah. They're divine. Yeah. Absolutely divine. Yeah, I recommend everybody figure that one out. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to say that there is, I don't think there's any greater challenge than figuring out how to be in your own authentic self and your own light in the middle of negativity yeah. and darkness. Yeah. You know, there's no greater challenge to learn how to hold your own or learn how to shine than when you are surrounded by that negativity. I have so many yeah. people come to me, and honestly, you know, I have to say, if the negativity is taking you down and you're not strong enough, get out. Mm -hmm. Get out of there. Yeah. But also realize that that can be an opportunity for you to grow very strong, but you have to be connected with God, divine spirit, and also very strong, mature friends mm -hmm. who can help, help support you. Yeah. So it's yeah. a, it's a delicate balance in there. Yeah. Because a lot of times you get confused in what is your stuff and what is their stuff. Yeah, especially if you have low self-esteem mm -hmm. or you're used to laying down and being a rug under people's feet. I yeah. don't know why that feels so good, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll just be a goat rug down here. Why don't you just walk on me, right? Yeah. But, you know, a lot of people with big hearts, compassionate people, um, empathic people, you know, we're the ones that try to make it okay. You know, we want to be the peacemakers. We want to, no matter what people do, we're like, oh, that's okay. They're just having a bad day. And yeah. I'll just walk on eggshells over here and it'll be okay. I can do this. Mm -hmm. But honestly, we're selling ourselves short and we're, we're selling them short because we're not requiring them to take responsibility for their self mm -hmm. and their own actions. Yeah. You know, Angela, it's a big discussion, really. What is our truth? How do we speak our truth? How do we hold it? How do we hold our resonance? Um, how do we not be taken down? And, you know, the truth is that we're going to, we're feeling creatures. We're human. And even when we think we mastered all this stuff, we're going to feel it and be human again. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> darn it <laughs> I know you know it doesn't matter how long I've been on this journey there's days when I'm like wow I just man I'm overloaded today I mm -hmm. I got some self care going on I gotta I gotta go take care of me mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and process out all of that stuff yeah yeah so yeah Definitely. singing chanting mantras um uh, to me, it's a fun way. Um, yeah, it's a fun thing. And also, you know, you can tell people, ah, 
I'm going to go chat for a while. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> and there's my little altar and my little space. and Everybody kind of backs up and tiptoes around the edge, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because with you, you don't mess around with chanting. It's like. <laughs> they're probably, you know, sometimes they're like, what's she doing? I don't even know what she's doing. <laughs> I think I'll just leave the house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good way to clear out the cobwebs, the uh, this, <laughs> the lower energy. <laughs> you know, that's a good that's a good thing too because it does clear the energy out. It, it changes the space. You know, yeah. it'll change your space faster than anything. So, you know, by yeah. the way, I wanted to tell um, your listeners. Yes. You know, it, it depends how much they're into sound, but uh, you know, because I clear houses. You know, I clear people and houses of negative energies, whatever you want to call that. And one of the easiest ways to clean your house is with a bell, mm. a little bell. You just take a little bell and you ding it and walk all through the house or or walk through the house and sing a happy song with a feather and sweep the air and clean out the space. And so sound is a very clean way because, you know, as we know, if we use sage, you know, it can leave a residue, right? If we throw salt around, somebody's got to clean it up. <laughs> Yeah, I never understood that one, but <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. But with sound, it's nice and clean, and it really raises the vibration. Um, I have sometimes recommended to people that they play house music while they're gone, and it's just lovely, soft music that you put on, and then you leave and go to work, and the CD will stop playing or whatever it is, and um, it it sets the mood of the house. It's really good to do it for your animals too. Your animals love it. Oh, yeah. You know? It's kind of like, and yeah. then you walk in, and it feels like you're at in a luxury hotel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, you know, of course I throw aromas out there too, but you know, because I'm a princess. But um, yeah, I always uh, turn on my my CD, and I, at the door I say, "Goodbye, house. Have fun." <laughs> And then I come home and I go, hello, house, I'm back. You know, and it's like, yes, she's going to turn the music on. Yeah. And the plants love it. And, and you know, the fish love it. And, oh, God. You know, God. Dewey, Dewey doesn't love it, but the Tibetan parakeet, but we're not going to go there. So, yeah. We yeah. can have so much fun with our lives and, and using all of these amazing, like, subtle tools just to amplify and and have just a magical experience. So yeah. I'm wondering if um, there's anything that you feel like you'd like to say, um, anything, any last words before I know you're going to do a chant for us. Yeah, I'm going to do a chant for you. I, I want to say that if there's anything that makes you joyful, I think that joy is one of the biggest things. And, and, Singing, chanting, doing that, the healing work that I do with people, music and sound and beauty, all of these things are very, very important for our lives. And so remember them, you know, remember them and keep them active. Mm -hmm. Hum anytime you want. Cool. <laughs> I hum on the airplanes. <laughs> nice. So the chant that I'd like to do for you is the victory chant from Durga. Mm, nice. Because it's such a good chant. Yeah. And I love it very much. And for this chant, you know, it's always good to prepare the self. And so I recommend that you just take some deep breaths in through the mouth or in through the nose and out the mouth. So breathing in and exhaling. As you breathe in, breathe up into the light above your head. Hold the breath a moment and then exhale out. Breathe three, five, a thousand feet above your head into beautiful sparkling light and connect with it. Hold your breath. Turn the breath outwards. Exhale through the mouth and let your day go. You can breathe in and out at your own rate, but continue to focus way up above your head into that beautiful light and allow the light to come in, down, and around your body. Sparkling light, cleaning and clearing out all negativities. 
as I'm preparing the space for you, and believe me, I am preparing the space for you with lots of help. I want you to begin to bring to mind those things that you would like to let go of. And it could be anything. It could be an old way of being, an old pattern. Maybe it's an addiction or just a thought process. Maybe it's a lack of self-love, a lack of self-esteem. And so bring these things to mind. And as I chant, I would like you to allow Dorga to come in and help clean them away. She is the great protectress, the great divine mother herself on the back of a tiger with ten arms, with all kinds of weapons, and her face is serene. And so let's call in Durga for you. Here we go. Oh, my Mrim Klim Chmundaye Viche Namaha. 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 Oh my dream clean moon day viche namaha 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 Oh my Mrim Klim Chmundaye Viche Namaha. Oh my Mrim Klim Chmundaye Viche Namaha. Breathe in deeply. Exhale. Breathe this powerful energy into your body. And exhale everything that you need to let go of. Breathe in this beautiful, powerful energy into yourself. And as you exhale, allow yourself to settle down into the seat of your own power. Breathe Durga in, the victorious Durga, and allow yourself to feel what it feels like to have the victory over all of that. We thank her so much for coming. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> So where can people connect with you? Because I know, you know, you're in, you're around the Seattle area, but people. I'm can, in Seattle. You, yeah. You definitely work um, virtually though. So. I do. I have clients all over the world. Uh, I've been doing uh, what I do almost 20 years, which is hard to believe. I know. And I am very busy. I have my own radio show, the yeah. Red and Brown Voice from the Oasis. We're on uh, KKNW 1150 AM. Currently on the second and fourth Thursdays of the month at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And just keep watching because things are growing. Um, but you can find me at ReikiOasis.com, Facebook.com slash ReikiOasis. Thanks, okay. Angela. Love you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Loretta, so much for joining me You're today. You're on fire. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> and happy birthday to you, Aries Happy woman. birthday to you. <laughs> Thanks again. And now I'd love to hear from you guys. The best discussions happen after the show over at TheAwakenedGoddess.com. So get yourself over there and leave a comment right now. Did you enjoy this episode? If so, subscribe to the show. And of course, it would be amazing if you share this with all of your friends. And if you want even more incredible resources, come on over to theawakenedgoddess.com and sign up for email updates. And until next time, goodbye, everyone. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Awakened Goddess. I hope you enjoyed today's show and took away something you can start using in your life right away. For more spiritual insights, and to listen to more episodes, subscribe to The Awakened Goddess Show at thegoddessnextdoor.com. 
and discover wisdom that'll change your life.